What's up folks? I'm making a website and this website could entail a lot of vertical scrolling. There's a lot of data people can turn on and that data's got to go somewhere. And if you have a website with a lot of vertical scrolling, it's a kindness to the user to give them some way to quickly jump back to the top of the page. So you don't want them wearing out their, their mouse wheels. So I figured out a way to do that using the Intersection Observer API and I thought it was pretty neat. So I wanted to show you. This will be a quick one. Uh, this project is using Svelte and Tailwind. And uh, yeah, let's jump right in. This is what the page looks like right now. Uh, still, uh, I know, I know it's pretty, but it's, it's you know, still under, it's, it's still being worked on. It actually doesn't really do anything other than look pretty at this point in time. But suppose you had turned on some stuff and you had a lot of horizontal scrolling. So you scroll down a bit and this back to the top button shows up and it just sits in the bottom right corner of your page. If you scroll back up, it'll go away or you can click that button. It'll scroll back up for you and then that back to top button goes away. So how do we do that? Well, I'm using a single spelt component just for that back to top button. And this is where I instantiate that component. And what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if the user's browser has Intersection Observer. And the only ones that don't are IE11 and Opera Mini, I think, at this point. Now there is a polyfill for the Intersection Observer API, but in this case, this isn't like you have to have this or you can't really use the website. It's like, this is nice. So I'm not gonna polyfill that for everyone just for IE11 and Opera Mini. Those folks are used to living lives, uh, lives of toil and struggle and, and I don't wanna rob them of that. So if Intersection Observer is available in your browser, it makes this new back to top component or instantiates that component. It's going to give it a target and in Svelte, this is where you want that code to, or that component to drop. So on, on, the, on the page, I just have a div with this back to top ID. So that's where I put the component. And for props, I have a property for that component called track. And that track tells it which element of the page it wants to use with the intersection observer. So it knows when it's on the page and when it's off the page. So that's how we instantiate that component. Now the component itself uh, is, this is the entire thing. And here we have our button. And uh, yeah, if you ever use Tailwind, you'll, you'll recognize Tailwind is basically stringing a whole bunch of, it's not like a component CSS library, it's like a utility library. And use those utilities to build your components. So like that button, I just gave it different colors and what to do when it hovers and, and all of this happy stuff. And give it a fixed position in the bottom right. That's, that's Tailwind CSS. Tailwind is, is really cool, uh, especially if you combine it with Purge CSS. So when you compile for production, everything you're not using just gets tossed out, hopefully. Uh, Tree shaking and CSS is still a, a, a hard thing to do, but it, it generally works very good. So here's our button. And I basically have some code saying, if, if visible is true, show it. If it's not, don't show it. And when this button or this component is instantiated, it sets visible to false. Now, this is how you expose a property in Svelte. You just go export and then you, you make a variable and that exposes that property. You can also give those variables default values like that if you want. So that, that's how you expose properties. And here's where we do our stuff. I'm making a new intersection observer. And when it gets an entry and your entry is an array of stuff it observed, I take the first one because there's, there's only one and I look at the intersection ratio. The intersection ratio is a ratio from one to zero that tells you how much of that element is in the visible viewport. Zero means none of it, one means all of it, 0.5 means half of it, and so forth. So if this intersection ratio is more than zero, then some part of the search box is on my page. So I don't wanna show that button. 
Now, if it's not greater than zero, in other words, if it is zero, go ahead and show that back to top button. So you see the search box. We're still good, still good. Oh, now it's totally off the page. Uh, now a little bit, it's on the page, so that button goes away. That's how that works. So this is all the code to get it to do that. Now, when you click that button, I'm just, and here's where I, how you would bind a click event in Svelte. It's pretty similar how to do, do it in pretty much anything. I'm just running the scroll up function, and here I'm scrolling it to the top of the page rather than the target. Because when I scroll to the target, it would scroll back up to like that, which looks weird. So I just scrolled it back up to the top of the page. So that's how I did that in uh, with uh, the uh, intersection observer. Thought it was very easy and uh, it made a lot of sense. Uh, I will be doing some a lot of blog posts and stuff on Svelte and Tailwind and the stuff I'm using to build this project. So I think it's really cool. And of course this project will all go on GitHub if it ever launches, which will just take a while because it uh, it's, it's kind of like a side 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 project. So it's it's yeah, it's going to take it's going to take some time. But so far, I am really liking Svelte. I think the code, uh, the way it works just makes a lot of sense. And there's really nothing that's that's thrown me off. It has a lot of built in neat stuff. Like it has a built in store kind of like a UX sort of thing, but in its own way. It has like transitions. When that button goes on or off the page, it does a little smooth transition in. I'm using a fade transition there. And it uh, it builds to very tiny, very fast code. So, so far thumbs up, but uh, I'm just getting started. Now I'll keep plugging away. I hope you found this useful and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.